what's going on everybody this is DK Dynamite and today we're gonna be talking about some secret changes and a ton of season 3 surprises that no one really expected definitely stay tuned but before we jump into that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below drop a like and also as a reminder both tanked and even grow house are in the public map rotation so I made a mistake in a previous video when I mentioned that grow house was available via private match I figured that was early access to the map before it would officially go live as of this week once the 420 event started I just haven't played enough in the quick play playlist and I didn't know that the new 66 maps were still live in there but also as a reminder there is plenty of brand new content going up over on detonated.com for those that want some article coverage of multiplayer warzone and zombies warzone mobile ranked cdl best loadouts plus we got plenty of tweets every single hour on detonated's twitter now as you guys can see there is a code on screen that will grant you guys access to a new limited edition calling card i know it's for warzone mobile but i do believe it will transfer into the main game if it doesn't i will keep you guys updated with additional information but it is expected over the next few weeks that other free cosmetics do get dropped this way we should be seeing some more codes out there in the wild that will grant us access to some various cosmetics that should work across every single game and every platform but i want to start off by mentioning the brand new armory unlocks as a part of our third season this is the first big content drop where we saw multiple pieces of perks and gear added into the game and what do you know they've all been added via the armory unlock system i think it's cool that the armory unlock system still gets updates to the point where there is a reason to continue doing daily challenges apart from the xp bonuses you'll get but you can actually use those challenges to get your hands on something like the compression carrier which is quick fix an absolutely vital part here of mw3 multiplayer i think with the increased ttk it really really makes sense to have a perk like this inside of the game and better late than never but yeah i do expect other perks and gear to be added into the game over the next couple of months in which we'll end up seeing them added through the armory unlock system but wanted to bring this up for those that weren't aware that there are new perks available and this will always be the way new perks get added into modern warfare 3's ecosystem them. But we did get some brand new patch notes for both MW3 and Warzone. Starting off with the base game, Sledgehammer did confirm that they've added a stability fix and addressing a crash that could occur while viewing weapon attachments. Customization resolved various issues with quick equipping weapon charms in the store and corrected display names of the Season 3 Prestige Emblems. Also addressed an issue causing the latency telemetry widget to constantly display not available. Several bug fixes for the UI over in multiplayer with armory unlocks. Operators no longer appearing to have two riot shields equipped or moving certain conversions version kits not properly reflected weekly challenge countdown timer no longer displayed an invalid time as the mid-season update approaches uh corrected positioning of the fjx horse and the gunsmith calling card and emblem rewards from the weapon mastery completion are now displayed properly in the after action report removing weapon sticker and the gunsmith will no longer cause the placement indicators to disappear and revised pro con labels for multiple attachments to better reflect their true properties they've improved the prioritization of spawn locations while any kill streak is active and nearby then for progression the ripper lights stock for the FJX no longer appear locked and without unlock requirements. They also improved tracking of one-shot kills for the What's Your Sign camo for the Morse Sniper. And then several different map changes. We got one for shipment, one for tanked when it comes to spawn points and nameplates, and then some weapon adjustments there for the SVA, FJX, Tech Evolve Ray, and the Morse, as well as some adjustments there for perks like Ninja Vest and the Compression Carrier. Again, if there's any big loadout changes that have to get reported on, we will have an article on Detonated about what the best loadout is as of these patch notes. But then they've gone ahead and adjusted the EMD grenade, scattermine, and the C4, as well as adjusted the Guardian and even the remote turret. Over in Warzone, got some pretty simple changes. First off, they've enabled vehicles over in Rebirth Island, which is pretty cool, and they've gone ahead and added some bug fixes when it comes to some equipment. Uh, players shooting their weapon while ledge hanging after picking up a Guardian. There's a problem with that. A red outline on the border of the minimap. An issue preventing one-shot protection from functioning in ranked play. And then an issue causing too many UAB towers to spawn in ranked. As well as an issue with uh, players equipping unlocked items in the rank overview within the rank rewards menu. During the Season 3 Creator Call, a good week and a half ago, there was a really interesting detail dropped that I haven't seen too much discussion about online. And that is the fact that a Grand Mastery Reward is apparently being planned and it's unclear if that's for people who've went ahead and completed Modern Warfare 2's mastery for Orion and Interstellar Modern Warfare 3 or is it just for people that have done MW3's Interstellar and Borealis from Zombies or they're taking it a bit further where if you've done all mastery from MW2 and 3 we're talking Orion, Interstellar, Borealis and Bioluminescent so that would be four different mastery camels maybe it's a reward for those people that's a big question mark but let me know down below in the comments if you've completed every single camel grind since the beginning of mw2 last year all the way up until the new game this year i'm really curious what the reward is gonna be for i'm still crossing my fingers for that mixing and matching feature that did accidentally get revealed through a cod blog post i think it was during
during MW2's launch window, it showed the ability to go ahead and mix and match camos as you would please, so maybe that could be a cool reward, hopefully it's something more than a charm or just a simple calling card. Now before we continue, I just wanted to remind you about MitchCactus.com where you can get assistance grinding camos, nukes, or schematics in MW3. These guys do not use unlock tools or any bannable methods and will actually help you play the game. MitchCactus is also supported by Trustpilot with over 10,000 verified reviews. You can use code DYNAMITE for a limited time to save 5% off your order. Now I want to go over something that actually got confirmed many months ago and a lot of players including myself thought that it just got added into the back end but there was never really any proof behind it but now we know the feature actually wasn't live at all but is slowly being rolled out to a number of different players. That is the ability to stay with the same lobby after your match ends. This is a very basic feature that we saw in many older Call of Duty titles where a game would end and you'd go back into a lobby with the same people. If those people had backed out then that's what would happen but if the players didn't back out then you would essentially be in the same lobby and you'd be able to vote for the next map that you'd want to play. Now ever since I want to say Modern Warfare 19, maybe even a little bit before that, there's been a reoccurring theme of just being backed out of that lobby right when your match ends and it refreshes the pool and you get placed with some new players and that's probably in line with the way the new skill based matchmaking does work. It's actually more like engagement based matchmaking as we talked about in a separate video many months ago. Activision went through a lot of extensive detail on how the matchmaking works in Call of Duty now and especially with the Warzone era, but it looks like after you finish matches of multiplayer for MW3, you may get a prompt asking you if you want to stay with the same lobby. This won't pop up after every game that you play, but could pop up, which I think is a cool step in the right direction. I just wonder how this shakes up skill-based matchmaking or the engagement-based matchmaking this game offers. Because it's not popping up after every game, does it mean that the players were really at your skill level and were on par with your performance to the point where it's allowing you to keep playing with them? Or did it notice that there were players in that lobby that shouldn't have been there and it won't give them the prompt to stay in that lobby. I really wonder exactly how it works, but funny enough, Call of Duty put out another statement as of a couple days ago saying that they have some separate articles planned in regards to matchmaking that they'll be posting over the course of this year. They post a new one about ping and essentially it says ping is king. That's something that we can condense that article down to. A lot of details if you guys want to read up about it, but really it just says ping is very important for how you matchmake, but they have one coming out about skill in June, one about rank play in late summer, and one about the experimentation methods they've been using that's going to be dropping in fall 2024. But what's also really cool when it comes to Warzone is that the variable time of day feature for Rebirth isn't something that's going to be added to Resurgence right away. From my understanding, based on the creator call, Beanox made it clear that that'll be a feature that's added onto Rebirth Lockdown, which is a mode coming, I believe, right before the midseason or during it. So I think it's cool they can experiment with new changes like that in a mode other than Resurgence, so it doesn't upset a lot of Resurgence players out there. But if the variable time of day updates get well received they will in fact incorporate those into resurgence later in season three or some point after that i know we had the eclipse over in rebirth as of yesterday which was really cool to see if you guys haven't checked out my beast glove review inside of mw3 in warzone i'll have that video linked down below i also wasn't aware that the ability to track challenges in the menu wasn't a feature that worked for warzone i guess it was just multiplayer when that got added in last season but now you can go ahead and use that feature over in warzone which is cool well, amongst one of the biggest features though that i still can't believe finally got added is the ability to clear team pings. It won't fully get rid of their ping on their end, but in terms of your HUD, you can clear your teammates ping so that you can go ahead and have more clarity with your minimap or just with your environment altogether. So that's something you can find on the scroll wheel on D-pad or whatever key you use over on keyboard and mouse. And I think the Warzone quality of life updates just keep getting better and better. And some of the things we mentioned in this video, of course, got buried in patch notes. You might have missed them or you might have known about them, but still want to go over a lot of these changes for those that didn't know. And then some other really cool ones, right? We have a new stat board that you can see when you pause your game in Warzone. You can hit start and you'll see a stat board with detailed statistics as to what weapons you're using, you know, how your performance is. We already have something like this over in multiplayer that, again, took a little bit longer for Warzone to get. But I'm glad that it's a really shared system across the board where if one mode gets a really powerful quality of life update, it may take half a season or two, but the other mode is also going to get it. You can also spot multiple enemies in smoke, which is awesome for those that abuse the smoke meta. If you throw a spot grenade it'll not just stick the player closest to the spotter but every enemy within the smoke which is awesome and you can also withstand i think one stick from a semtex grenade if you're running the eod perk so another pretty cool change there for the warzone experience now i do want to wrap up by mentioning some other minor updates that i think still change the game quite a bit though first off the ability to skip seasonal cutscenes i think you guys out there might consider this a bit of a minor change but in all honesty right when a season begins if you get spammed with that seasonal cutscene that gets repetitive and pretty frustrating 
but that's not what I meant when I said that this is a pretty cool change for the future. The ability to have extra party bonus XP. So depending on how many players are in your squad, for two players, you got a 25% rank and weapon XP. For three players, you'll get the same deal, but with battle pass XP. But then for four players, you're going to get a 30% rank weapon and battle pass XP bonus. That's actually pretty crazy, especially considering there could be a double or triple XP event happening at the same time. Stack that with this party bonus, which I believe does work. And that's a lot of XP you're going to be grinding through. Now, even if that doesn't stack with an XP event, that's still an opportunity to go ahead and level up your character or weapon or even battle pass faster when there isn't an event going on, which to me is an awesome way to maybe catch back up if you're a little bit behind on some of your leveling. But don't forget, within Season 3, we're going to be seeing a new party collection for the bundles, and that's going to feature a series of different skins themed around circus clowns or just creepy freaks. And if you guys actually run any skins from that collection within one party alone, Alone, there will also be an XP bonus tied to that, so pretty curious if that's going to stack with some of these other XP bonuses I mentioned, but that likely will be the case, which is going to be crazy if you guys out there just want to level up even faster. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. Those are some of my favorite secret changes and Season 3 surprises that I think really make this season fairly unique. Really curious to see what other quality of life updates are on the way for the next season and beyond, and especially with Black Ops 2024. Leave all your thoughts down below. Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out everybody.